Hello everyone and welcome to our CE375 at WVU Tech uh, GIS Applications in Engineering. This is our first uh, video for the first lecture which is introduction to GIS and just going to talk about what is GIS. Uh, this video has been a little bit late due to due some technical difficulties but now let's go ahead and start our work and start our presentation. Let me just first put here my my pointer, and now let's start. So again, our course here is about GIS applications in engineering. So we're going to be focusing in this class about engineering work and engineering applications of geographic information systems. And as you know, all guys, that GIS is a universal tool that's used in other multiple disciplines. Uh, started from geography and now we as engineers we claim uh, the use of this science because its origins is very very related to our work in civil engineering with specific work in surveying so let's start guys so uh, this is a textbook that I use in in my class which is the introductory geography information system by the rent by the Jensen's uh, however there are other textbooks online that I use this is a really good another textbook GIS basics uh, in this class any uh, introductory textbook would work well in this class so let's talk now about what is GIS what's the meaning of geography well since we live in this planet in this earth uh, it was important for us to discover that planet and the best way to discover this planet is by using mapping and maps so our question here as GIS, who belongs where and how? Uh, so if you live in, on this earth, then you could probably be a GIS expert because you want to find your way around, even by driving to somewhere. That means that you are a GIS expert. We're going to talk about something called spatial, spatial information. Spatial comes from the word space. So here we are have the space science, defining also the answer where answer the question where uh, spatial information cannot imagine guys how much it has some great impact on our lives it helps us in complete you can't imagine everyday task just going from one place to another that's kind of a geography and we do it on a bigger scale in our class here when we talk about maps but we do maps all the time sometimes you have a map for your own house and your own room so everything we do as humans, it always happen in a specific location. And this is what we mean here by the word spatial information. In this class, in the first introductory part, we're going to be talking a bit more about the word spatial information or spatial data. And how do we make use of that? And how do we get it? And how do we map it as well? So everything that happens or exists happens somewhere. Uh, knowing where it happened or existed is very important because we want to discover our Earth. It's part of our uh, human way of dealing with stuff. All human activities, oral activities, require some knowledge about the Earth. Everything you do, building a house, painting your wall, driving from one place to another, going to the store, that has some kind of space in it. So here comes the word GIS or Geographic Information System. As you notice here, it starts with the word geogra Geographic Geography. So it's another science for another discipline that we engineers, as I told you, we claim the use of that. So GIS is designed to input. So we need some input, some data, display, and also do some analysis of this data uh, to solve some spatial problems. Mapping science are so vast, especially us as engineers, we use it in different ways. So just to list some of these, uh, the word geodesy is another word for surveying. Actually, it's that it has more, uh, you can say, twist to it. When I see here geodesy, I'm talking here about the curvature of the Earth. So it's surveying, but on a bigger, bigger scale. And then surveying, you all guys know what's the meaning of surveying. And uh, I'm gonna go to cartography at the end. So here we talk here about geodesy, surveying, and remote sensing. Remote sensing is a science that started in the 80s when satellites, 
started growing the earth, other uh, technological advancements in aeroplanes. The important thing is simply that we need to map remotely. And when I say remotely, we're going to use some kind of aeroplanes or satellites. And satellites became a very important part of surveying our Earth. And this is a science by its own, it's part of surveying, but it's mainly used to map the Earth and know what's going on in the Earth. Uh, and then comes the word GIS. GIS is what we're doing in this class. And then comes part of the GIS, which is more like an art other than the science, the, the science of drawing maps. And this is what we call here cartography. Another slide here showing the same thing, that GIS development, development has relied on innovations made by other disciplines. It's not just one discipline, it's because it's a science of mapping, science of data, science of engineering. So it dealt with all that. We talk here geography, meaning I don't know where. We talked here about cartography, the art of drawing maps. Photogrammetry, this is what I was telling you. And the difference between both photogrammetry and remote sensing, photogrammetry uses aeroplanes, specific aeroplanes, to take pictures of the earth using some kind of special techniques and cameras. This also started in the 70s and 80s. And from these pictures, we get to any kind of surveying. And it's a very, very beautiful science. And then came the remote sensing, which deals with satellites, satellite pictures. And these pictures also tend to help us know lots of things about the Earth. And then you notice, guys, again, the difference between surveying and geodesy. Surveying is usually when we deal with small areas and we assume the land there is no curvature over and geodesy for bigger bigger scales when we have uh, the, earth, the curvature of the earth as an input and then comes our you guys civil engineers because surveying is part of civil engineering and we deal a lot of space in all our civil engineering projects because all our projects happen somewhere and since we're talking with data we use a lot of statistics and there is a new science actually something called spatial statistics meaning that it's statistics that has some kind of space attached to it and GIS is a huge part of that and then since we're dealing with computers the AI and computer science is a big thing and that's what we're doing in our labs we're using computers, we're using computers some analysis and then OR, corporation research how to optimize your data to get the best thing and many others including mnemography and other disciplines so you can see here they all helped us create this kind of beautiful science which we call here GIS GIS is some kind of a discipline similar to transportation guys it's a discipline that is connected and contains some other kinds of disciplines around it uh, oh applications oh my I won't say much about applications because GIS is used everywhere. Every single discipline uses some kind of applications. The only thing I want to put here is that part of this class, you guys, that you need to think about ideas and innovations and business entrepreneurship ideas that will be connected and related to GIS and the data or the software or hardware. It's up to you. So just reading this slide here might give you some inputs and ideas of how to use entrepreneurship and innovation in GIS. Let's talk a bit, little bit of history. Where did, when did the, the, the GIS start? As I told you guys in class, just having a pencil and paper is some kind of a GIS. And uh, GIS has served lots of things since humans came to this earth. When humans came to this earth, they wanted to know more about their... Uh, their planet and one, one thing they started is to start drawing maps when we were kids and we used to f watch the pirate movies probably the map of the of the treasure island and the treasure showing you where to go and find the treasure this is some kind of a GIS so uh, maps started when humans started trying to discover an earth and I show so it helped number one to discover discover land and you know that continents were discovered because of that. It helped also in wars, planning, cooperation, and conflict. And here maps is a huge thing when we do that. And it also helps us how to 
utilize our land to produce our food, energy, clothes, transportation, and so on. Uh, this is the uh, one early pictures of discovery. Uh, I think this is South America, and it's this drought between South America and uh, Antarctica. And uh, I think it was done by the British discoverers. So that was one very old just drawing that tries to give an idea how does the shape of the new land look like. Talking about information systems and how it helps people in early times. Uh, the best example I can give is the empires. Any empire in this world to rule the earth, they had to find some kind of maps and even they try to update these maps to include their new land. And I want to talk here, for example, about the British Empire, which was known as the empire that the sun never sets on. You can see here these red countries, these were part of the empire or countries that were colonized by the British Empire. Uh, so the red here, so it shows you how they used maps and, and they ruled the earth because of their navy and their uh, control of the seas around the earth. And also they helped discover new lands like Australia and like different countries in Asia and the Americas. Also, let's talk about other empires. Well, the competitive for the British Empire was the French Empire. You can see here uh, how did the French Empire go. And also the Spanish Empire. And the Spanish Empire was the one that has the... Uh, that started trying to find new land to go to India. And this is how they discovered uh, North America. So you can see here that all these countries had to rule the earth by some kind of location and maps here and developing new maps especially for the the new the discovered land in the Americas was one uh, very uh, crucial thing for these empires. Let's talk about discovering the Americas. These were the trips of Christopher Columbus his roots which started he wanted to get spices from India and he believed in that the earth was a sphere so he said let's let's just move west and this is where he discovered the new land of the Americas these are the, di the different trips the, from the first to the fourth voyage of Christopher Columbus and he then started creating maps and building maps for these new lands so let's get back here to spatial data. So spatial data are, are so simple, it's just something that we do all the time. So they are data that includes some unique geographic coordinates. So the word coordinate is something that we are very, very cared to know about or very cared. Uh, we, we care a lot about word coordinates as engineers. They're numbers that define a location on the earth or spatial identifiers. So are there different identifiers other than coordinates? Yes, there are, that allow the data to be located somewhere. So in a database, we're going to differentiate between something. Let's first define something called a feature. Let's get back here to the map of Christopher Columbus. So here, he wanted. we wanted to know what is this country, Cuba. This is called a feature. A feature is a spatial thing on the map, something that has coordinates or something that has a location on that map. So here, when we define what we call a feature, we want to in a database we want to differentiate for this feature between two things: something called spatial data, data that tends to look at the space, the location, and something else we'll be dealing a lot in this class to connect it to spatial data, which we call here attributes. So for example, what is the info? Maps. Anything that tells me where it is and how it looks like. So here, the location, the address, the maps, aerial photos or satellite images that tells me where Cuba is. And then, when once we looked at Cuba, we want to we connect to this database. And we are, that's why I said here the word database. We want to connect some other data that is connected and related to this Cuba. For example, when it was discovered, uh, what's the area, how many people. When we talk about person, 
his attributes, age, color, size, price, weight, whatever, any other thing that's related to his or her attributes. So when we have our mapping, for example, a restaurant in a map in a city, then we probably need to know, well, what's the price of this place? Uh, where is and where is located comes here and how expensive it is what's the color of the uh, the doors anything related to the attributes of this so it can be anything that's non spatial or we call it another th another thing a spatial these are another way to this is another way to define the attributes of the feature so here, here we learn three new things number one the feature which is something you have in the map, some item you have in the map, some object you have in the map, and then we find the spatial and non-spatial data in your database. Spatial data defines where it is, non-spatial has more attributes, and we talk a lot about attributes in our GIS work. So GIS builds database those results from data processing of the real world. So here we one thing we do in GIS is that we build what we call a, a database and this database comes from your processing the world. GIS allows us to track what's happening in any place so we can define GIS as a database. Similar to any database you get you put it in Excel or put it in Access software that deals with data and put them arranging them in some kind of a database but it has a spatial part of it so GIS allows us to track what is happening at any place and helps us to understand how one place differs from another so here we have here some kind of GIS tools we store the data in a database and we do some kind of analysis to find these locations and to just locate it and put some information and then present it and also analyze it and it's very effective for as us as engineers since we do lots of decision making design and planning we need some uh, location attached to it uh, so uh, we do something called a digital representation and sometimes because we are doing some work we need some kind of approximation what do you mean by approximation uh, when we draw for example a transportation highway on a map we don't draw it by detail probably some kind of a line and a number will tell me this is interstate 64 so so we have here the real world we process the data of this real world we know more about it and we create some kind of an abstract shape of it in a map so this is the final output we use in decision making sometimes you don't need every single item in your real world and that's why we do some kind of abstraction or simulation uh, simplification here uh, some examples here for GIS applications and, uh, and this uh, I brought I borrowed it from your textbook guys is the 911 when you call 911 uh, once you call your number is being displayed at the computer there at the dispatch and they will try to know your location and uh, so it's store it has stored your location based on your phone uh, and then it's it starts looking for two things number one what, what is it the closest service vehicles that's next to you and also tries to figure out what is the closest way to get from whatever service vehicle when I say service here I'm talking police ambulance and trucks uh, fire trucks to go to your place as fast as possible uh, another thing here is that when you purchase some data and they ask you for your uh, zip code they create a data base that will know more about your need about this kind of purchase so they can do more marketing in your area you can find this a lot in Facebook for example well there are tons of applications here for engineers and business people so let's get back here to spatial data so here features uh, again it has some spatial space components associated with it we map the location of the feature and then we do some kind of spatial analysis we're going to do lots of spatial analysis in our class 
and we'll learn the more about spatial error. So just to understand here what's the meaning of spatial component or what is the how do we know the space? Well, any feature, and again let's talk here about the shop. We want to know its location. So we have different ways, if you remember from your surveying engineering, we use different ways to define the location of that feature. The main way or the first way that you might all knew we have a page and we have an axis and we find the x and y and if it's in 3d you might also want to find the z if you want also to find the elevation of that point so any feature has some kind of a list of x y and z's that's one way to do it we try to list or try to connect this feature to some kind of a system of coordinates uh, or there are other ways we're gonna learn a lot in this class one way is something if we deal with the earth as a globe how do we find locations on this kind of a globe we use another system called a spherical or global system phi lambda or longitude and latitude also we're going to learn in this class how to find these and how to calculate these from other systems and since we're dealing with the sphere which is hard to map we try sometimes to do some kind of a projection from this guy to that guy so sometimes you use something called the projected coordinate system projection coordinate systems will be one presentation by its own guys or uh, you might have your own local system for example go to one city you might have their own specific local system and there are tons of local systems for example if you're doing your surveying job like you did in your surveying labs uh, the last few years you might end up with your do you remember the traverse or skeleton and you created some coordinates of these points of the traverse well, and you started here from zero, zero. So actually the local system is the same like X and Y, but it's specific to your local system. Well, and then comes one thing that we all know. If you want to send a letter, we put here the address, we put a zip code. And this is another way to find the location. Are there other new ways? yes and we're gonna talk we're gonna actually specific specify one lecture about some other ideas that can make you guys some money that can make you really good money to think outside the box of finding location how to make people use an easy way to find location i'm going to give you a really good idea that happened in the last few weeks and it became a trend around the world and this might give you some insights to think outside the box as a business person, not only an engineer or a GIS person, but also as a businessman or an entrepreneur. So what is GIS? If you look in your textbooks, not only one textbook, they always want to list, I have uh, probably more than eight or nine different definitions. Pick the one you like. We had an exercise last week to pick the best GIS and tell me why you like it. And I'm not going to read them. So this is, I have just a few slides just talking about what is GIS. This is one, two, three, <laughs> and four. So you can see here that GIS are some tools that to help us with this database of spatial and geographic knowledge and to represent it in output. Uh, one thing, and we talked about this in class so fast, is that when we have a GIS, we have something called layers. In early times, it was a uh, some pages above each other, and uh, we try to put these layers. Each layer has some kind of a specific information about your map so here if you look here this map and we call these thematic maps and layers for example this is your earth or this is your part that you want to map and you want to put different parts together you're going to see this cylinder a lot it has like some kind of layers so we start here with one layer for example street data buildings 
and then the green areas or the vegetation and if you put them all together and look at them from one and they all have the same coordinates so by putting maps and other kind of spatial information in digital form GIS allows us to manipulate and display this knowledge in new and exciting ways you can turn off layers you can exactly focus on what you exactly want so uh, what are and you notice now that GIS has has moved a lot with some technologies that we use so there are different technologies that we have and make use and they help GIS science to become one of the most important sciences that we use as engineers and other people and businessmen so there are tools to help spatial information geographic knowledge so well, there are tons of things that you do. Probably remember in your surveying some data collectors, your phones, or some other applications that you have in surveying. Uh, well, communication networks and the guys in electrical engineering help us a lot how to communicate this in a fast way. And then computers, of course, computers have boosted our work as GIS people. But even a simple pencil and paper can be a system of GIS by drawing a specific map. We did this guys in class, some kind of uh, air quiz and questionnaire that we did last week. And uh, we're going to be keep doing some very nice quizzes that will help us understand more about GIS. Uh, when we, I'm talking back here to the transportation, when we want to uh, look at our GIS GPS in our, in our cars or just go to Google Maps and we want to find directions and it helps us doing that this is some kind of a GIS how to manipulate a map look at the transportation system and it helps us find the directions or the best fast way to go from one place to another uh, this is called network analysis and we'll be doing this as well I'm going to understand how the computer does it and how does it find this as part of transportation engineers and uh, by this let's end this video let's make another video that will talk about part two of this exercise so have a great day guys and see you in video number two